Let's talk about all of it with former St. Louis Fed President James Bullard. He's now the dean of Purdue University's business school. It's nice to have you here, Jim. Great to be here. Uh, let me start off now. Bond market's closed today, of course, but you know, oftentimes we've been talking of late about the tenure in particular, the move up in the yield, not perhaps only reflective of Fed policy, but of this idea that supply and demand has now become very important to the movement of some of these bonds. How do you think about that, in particular, the deficits that we obviously are funding right now and are going to have to continue to fund for quite some time? Yeah, it's an issue, but I don't think that's the main dynamic here. I think the main dynamic is you had SVB, which is about 200 days in the past here, mm -hmm. and people predicted recession ahead because of SVB. That has not materialized, so the market has had to reprice, and that's where the higher yields are coming from, I think. You, so you're not as concerned that we're really just talking about an endless series of issuance that is going to tap out? There's plenty of issuance, yes, <laughs> but uh, I don't think that's the main dynamic here. I think that uh, the, the story that the U.S. was going to go into recession with very high probability in the second half of 2023 is just not materializing, and that is mainly what has caused the, the tenure to go back up. Uh, Four eight, I guess, close to four eight. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Uh, and all right, on Friday we got a very strong jobs yeah. report. And so I think that confirmed that the story is is just you know you've got if anything a reacceleration of the U.S. economy in the second half of 2023. You got to price that appropriately, and that uh, means higher for longer for the Fed. I think the uh, you know. Yes, we're getting disinflation. That's good. Uh, you've got the PCE on a 12-month basis, core PCE, about 3.8. That sounds pretty good, uh, but that's still double the inflation target. So you've got to get that down. It's going to take a while to get that down. The Fed will have to stay higher for longer. The faster growth in the economy is kind of good news, but uh, that'll probably slow down the pace of disinflation relative to what it otherwise would have been. Do you think the geopolitical events over the weekend change anything with regard to the rate trajectory for the Fed? Yeah, I mean, I've been trying to digest it just like everyone else. Uh, markets hate uncertainty, of course. Um, this so far doesn't look like it's going to uh, cause uh, a lot of problems in U.S. markets. I guess my initial reaction is U.S. often benefits perversely because of flight to safety. Um, so then uh, you get downward pressure on, on yields, and that also would argue for higher for longer for the Fed. I always think back to your slide decks from a few quarters ago, where, which were, I guess, seen as aggressive uh, at the time. But what were you seeing that suggested you thought the economy could handle those types of rates? You know, I've uh, emphasized the 1990s as a good uh, storyline for this episode. Of course, the parallels aren't identical, but we did raise rates aggressively in 1994. Uh, we did get a little bit of a slowdown in 1995, but skirted recession. Then it set up the U.S. economy for one of the best periods in the post-war era, and unemployment went all the way down to about the level where it is today. So I think... Um, People kind of think, oh, we, cannot, we can't stand 5% rates, but, you know, look at the second half of the 90s. You had rapid growth, about 4% GDP growth for many years in a row, and uh, uh, interest rates around 5%, uh, flat yield curve most of the time, and uh, uh, you got great results and, and great labor market as well. So I think... Uh, that's what would be my hope here, is that we're able to contain inflation, get it back down to 2%, and then set up a period of, of great growth for the U.S. economy.